but just tell me what got you so excited about clouds in the beginning and how did you realize this was something that other people were also excited about? Funnily enough, it was because people complain about them that I knew they were interesting. I mean, if everyone thought clouds were nice, then it's sort of obvious. A cloud appreciation society makes sense when it's kicking back against something. And that is, you know, I always felt that clouds in the sky was amazingly beautiful part of nature. And one which, because it's always there in the background, we can kind of become blind to. But I was interested in starting a society because I thought there are lots of people who they notice the clouds, but only in a negative way. Here in the UK, we've got a lot of cloud, we get a lot of low cloud, and many people feel the unpredictability of the weather means they just sort of associate it with ruining their barbecues and things like that. So people have these negative associations with the sky. So for me, there's something interesting there. You know, that is more than just, I like the sky, I think the sky is a beautiful part of nature. The fact that it's this underappreciated part of nature means that there's a sort of reason for the society to exist, which is a reminder for people to look at this everyday aspect of the world and see the positive in it, not just kind of have a knee-jerk reaction to the negative. It's something that children seem to naturally do. And then as they grow older, they seem to learn this association of the clouds as being the things that get in the way between us and the life-giving force of the sun. That's one way of looking at them, but it's a very sort of one-dimensional way of looking at the sky and looking at the clouds. Mm. So to me, anything's interesting when there are kind of almost an equal number of people for and against. That means that there's a kind of debate. It's a nice way of having people feel they're together by differentiation. Uh, and so often that's used in a negative sense, that human urge to be, are you in my group or are you not in my group? That's used in a divisive way in so many cases. But I saw that, you know, there's a way of using that in a positive sense as well. Absolutely. I love that you use that word reason. I think that seems to be one of the core things that distinguishes a sort of an intentional community from maybe just the friends you meet at school or your family or mm. perhaps your job. Did you see with the first people who came to the group that there was a strong understanding and alignment with you on that they were indeed advocates and there was something that they were sort of almost fighting for for clouds yeah i think it was um certainly when the website first launched january 2005 and you know i just got a book i had to make a website and i did it in dreamweaver and it was really kind of rubbish in many senses but the part that resonated for people was the images and the photo gallery and it really became apparent to me very quickly that they weren't rushing out right now and taking pictures and sending them in they had lots of pictures that they'd taken previously you know on their machines which they were sending in and I really got the impression that they'd been showing these to their friends, look at these pictures of the sky, and their friends would be going, yeah, 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 whatever. And finally, they felt like they'd found somewhere where people were actually interested to see, <laughs> to see these photos. So they came flooding in. And I do think that that was one of the aspects. There was a luck element in terms of it picking up early on, and that was just a technology thing of you know, d easy digital photography initially from um, small digital cameras and, of course, from smartphones, the ease with which they're sending those images in, mm -hmm. even if they were doing it through in a clunky way of sending them through email. But those sort of things coincided with the start of the society. And it's a great thing to take pictures of, as I'm sure you know from Instagram, there are probably billions of 
sky related Instagram images because you know there's something that feels very right about taking a picture of the sky and the reason is that the sky being in constant change means that any moment that you see it you know is passing it's fleeting and you know that therefore to take a picture of it at that moment it's marking something do you know what I mean? Marking something that's in transition. So there's this kind of feeling that it's right. You know, you see something great, you know that it's going to be gone in a couple of seconds. So to take a picture of it feels sort of like you've noticed it. It's like a kind of announcement, a visual announcement that you've paid attention mm-hmm. to the sky. So mm-hmm. I think in many senses, it just fitted that whole idea of here's somewhere interested in pictures of the sky. I've been taking them for a long time. It feels right to send them in. Yeah, this like desire for people who have noticed something that is beautiful or positive or meaningful to have that noticing experience be shared or seen by someone else is sort of at the core. Yes. People think of membership of the society as a badge or like a pin. I mean, we, we do, of course, give people a pin or an enamel badge when they join, but in a kind of more theoretical sense or metaphorical sense, people think of the society as something they like to sort of wear and tell other people about mm. because it has a very clear why, the society, which is to open people's eyes to this aspect of nature, which is the most dynamic and evocative and poetic part of nature, but also one of the most underappreciated. You know, everyone appreciates a sunset, but that's almost sort of too easy. There are lots of bits in between <laughs> that people miss. So um, the sort of why of the society is quite clear. And in fact, it's embedded in the name, which is another reason why the society spread very easily, I think, because mm-hmm. you don't need to have it to explain to you too much. But the fact that people think it says something about them is why they wanted to tell their friends about it. And I think what it's, people feel it says about them is that they have a particular view on the sky and they notice things which most people don't. So it's that idea that you're kind of defining yourself by what you're not. I think is a really important part of all human community it's as much defined by you know who you're not as it is defined by who you are. And that happens also with the concept in the, of the website and everything. I knew that there's just no point in doing a website that's about the weather because in the age of Google, the more broad your idea or what you represent, the more narrow your audience becomes. Mm-hmm. And the more focused the idea of what you are and what you represent ironically, the broader your audience becomes. Do you see what I mean? So, you know, right from the start, I kind of joked about this and said, you know, we've got a forum on the website and you're welcome to talk about anything on the forum as long as it's to do with clouds, otherwise we're not interested. And being really sort of focused about it, it was a way to be funny, but it was also a way to mean that everyone knew exactly what you were representing, exactly why you were there, and they knew exactly which part of them was going to resonate with this or not. Absolutely. I think that clarity is so important and so refreshing. And, and one thing that I also want to ask you about is, you know, the why this reason that we've been talking about appreciating clouds and seeing things slightly differently perhaps than other people is such an important reason why people joined the society and often many other communities One hunch that Kevin and I have is that the who is also very important. The people you start with, they have to really, really get that. I'm just curious, maybe can you take us through that first group of people? How did you get from, you know, society member one, which was you, to the first, you know, just 50 or 100? Who were those people? And, uh, you know, where did you find them and connect with them? The very first people were when I gave a talk. A friend of mine started a literary festival down in the southwest of England in Cornwall as part of the southwest of England. And she asked if I would do a talk about clouds because 
she was looking for speakers at the festival and uh, I hadn't written a book or anything and I hadn't started a society or, or I was just a friend of hers but I said oh sure I'll, I'll do a talk about clouds and and then the society really emerged from that the name of the talk I made just this sort of whimsical idea I called it the inaugural lecture of the cloud appreciation society just because I thought it sounded like an intriguing name for a talk I didn't have any real plan to start a society it was a sort of experimental idea really I did do badges little tin badges which I gave out at the end of the talk and there was a oh, kind of lots of people. I didn't yeah. think that so there's an yeah. original like 50 badges out there with a few people yeah that's right and I got I borrowed a badge one of those sort of metal press tin badge making machines from a friend and sort of made a bunch of them in the days before the talk and can um, I ask quickly why, I want to keep hearing about the who, but why did you make badges so soon? Because I thought I wanted it to be funny. Um, and I dressed up in a, um, like a lab coat because I wanted it to sort of be like a, a weird lecture, you know, the inaugural lecture. And so I was sort of putting on a kind of act in some senses, they're telling people about the different formations in a kind of lecture way. But I also wanted it to be something where people kind of got something at the end. And like, are you with us or are you against us? You know, that, that kind of idea. I think it was just an intuitive feeling about the fact that some people hate them um, and some people love them. And I wanted to precipitate that feeling of, are you in with us? Do you think the way I do or do you, do you hate this? And it